Okay, so lately it seems like just about everyone is interested in putting some kind of solar power system on their house. So I thought I'd do a quick video on what you need to know before going solar. The first question you got to ask yourself is what is your goal? Is it to save money, save the environment, or to be self-sufficient? Now this is probably the most important question you're going to ask yourself. The system you end up with will be quite a bit different depending on how you answer this question. So is it about the money? You want to just get rid of that electric bill every month? Is it that you're concerned about uh, climate change and you want to do something to help the environment? Or are you concerned that the utility could go out from a hurricane or maybe something worse and you don't want to be without power? Okay, so let's start with you just want to save money. You don't want an electric bill. So in this case, you're going to have a grid-tied system, a net metered system. Here, you're going to have a bunch of solar panels up on your roof with microinverters, and they feed a meter that's net metered. So when you're producing extra power, you push that power out onto the grid, and when you need power, you pull it from the grid. So let's look at some of the advantages and disadvantages. The advantages are, this is about the cheapest way to go solar. Okay, the payback period is pretty quick, five to seven years, maybe even less. And there's little or no maintenance because you have a lot less equipment. The disadvantages are that you will lose power when the utility goes down. So you have this nice panel up on your roof, but when the utility goes out, you can't use it. And that's to protect the linesmen who are fixing the line. The other disadvantage is that the utilities are likely to mess with you in the future. So uh, they could turn your panel off and on in some cases when they need the power when they don't. Uh, they can add all kinds of connection fees and you know, basically make it so that your system won't pay for itself. So take a close look at your state and the rules and, the, and your power company and uh, see if it would make sense for you. Okay, so saving money is nice, but your main concern is the environment. You're worried about global warming and climate change and you want to do something about it. Well, adding solar is probably not the first step. You want to look at conservation. Okay, so if you haven't done this stuff already, this is really no-brainers. You should definitely do this stuff. So go through your house, pull out all the old incandescent bulbs, and replace them with LEDs. They'll use about eight times less power, and they give off a lot less heat. Okay, next you go into your attic and uh, blow in another foot of insulation. Get your attic really well insulated. Okay, then power strips on your computers, your home entertainment systems that are, when they're not being used, you can turn off the entire system with uh, one switch and save all your phantom loads. And then if you really want to go crazy, go ahead and build your own solar water heater. Uh, this you can do with uh, recycled parts for under a hundred bucks, take you about a day to build it and will produce probably about 75% of your hot water. Okay, depending on where you're located, of course. So anyway, I did all this stuff and I cut my uh, energy use almost in half just by doing this. It costs less than a thousand dollars. The other half is through solar power. So solar power costs about twenty thousand dollars and you can cut the other half for a thousand. So this is definitely the thing to do first. Okay, so saving money and the environment are all well and good but you really want to be self-sufficient. You don't want to depend on the utility to provide your power. You want to provide your own power and make sure that you always have it. Okay, in this case, you're looking at a battery-backed solar power system, either off-grid or hybrid. The advantages to this type of system is that you never lose power. And if you've ever lost power for a significant period of time, then I don't have to explain to you why this is important, right? Uh, the other thing about power is if you have a well, then power gives you water, and that can be even more important. So the other thing, the other advantage 
is that the utilities will have no control of your system. Uh, you can set up one of these solar uh, off-grid solar power systems to look just like a backup generator and utilities won't even know you have it. The disadvantages are that it's quite a bit more expensive uh, with the batteries or it runs up the price so you end up 8 to 12 years on the, your payback period. I mean depending on your system of course. And there's more maintenance and just in general there's more to think about when you have an off-grid system. Okay so this is what I chose to do is the off-grid system and so I'll go into a little more detail about some of the options here. Alright so I'm going to break this down into uh, three levels of systems like entry level, mid-level, or serious systems. Alright let's take a look at the entry level system. This could, might cost $300 to $1,000 produce up to like one kilowatt uh, of power and you're looking at basically your harbor freights, your hobby systems um, and these are good you know I mean you can basically get one of these to learn about solar it has all the same kind of components and you you know you kind of learn how the systems work but they don't they don't really power anything significant you know maybe a light bulb <laughs> so but not a bad idea to learn how a system works before you put too much money into it. Okay, then we have the mid-level systems, and uh, this is what you see most of when you look across YouTube. There are hundreds of these out there. Uh, they cost one to six thousand dollars generally, and one to five k type systems, and they're usually you know like a hodgepodge of components that people have uh, just shopped around for and put together in various configurations and yeah you can run a few things and they're definitely better than nothing right so if you have a power outage you can still run your fridge or an air conditioner or all kinds of neat systems being put together uh, at this level and they're pretty good if they're done right uh, but usually problematic and by that I mean you'll see I mean just mismatched components and people end up with you know shelves full of inverters and charge controllers and different batteries and you end up buying over and over you just kind of working your way up to better stuff and I think a lot of these guys just I mean it's all good you know I'm not knocking anybody it's great you know if you're doing solar good for you but I'm just saying that in the end you end up spending what you'd spend on a high-end system because you have replaced everything four times you know so if you like tinkering around and doing that kind of stuff that's great if you really just want to build a system uh, you might just jump right to the high-level system that's what I did so let's get to that okay so that brings us to the high-end systems all right so if you really want to power your whole house on solar, you're looking at twelve to sixty thousand dollars, and nobody wants to hear that. And that's why the mid-level systems are so popular, because basically people are trying to cheat it. You know, they're trying to get a lot of power for five thousand dollars, right? And it's just this is what no one will tell you what is it how do they say that think stuff about solar no one will tell you or they don't want you to know that's it things things about solar they don't want you to know and that is if you really want to power your whole house it's really expensive and it's true um, you know that's a big range twelve to sixty thousand uh, 60,000 is like you have a great big system and you have someone install it and 12,000 is you do it yourself and it's only going to power like less than half of your house okay so that's 5 to 20k it takes really 8 to 12k to power the average house we're talking refrigerators freezers um, air conditioners hot water heaters all that stuff uh, probably 20 to 30 kilowatt hours a day all right, so these systems are bulletproof, right? There, there are several manufacturers. You got Magnum, you got uh, Outback, 
you got you know there's a bunch of them and they're all been around for a long time and you know if you install these high-end systems you know you're probably not going to have too many problems if you do it right and it'll run all or a major portion of your house depending on how big a system you build out and usually they're expandable so I built my system out I spent twenty eight thousand dollars just on the hardware and I did it myself after my tax break I got uh, probably eighteen thousand into it but I did all the work myself and I have an 8k system and it runs uh, most of the, our house but not the whole thing oh there's the phone I'll be back okay so if you're looking for a system like this um, a good place to start would be to call Johnny at Gain Solar Services over if you're in the Georgia South Carolina area uh, engineer 775 works with him in that area and I think they do Florida and stuff too but somewhere in that area if you're out west maybe check out Jason Andrade at uh, West Coast Sustainables those are two places I would go if you don't want to you know do it yourself and even if you do they could probably maybe source some equipment for you and, and uh, get you started so that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on the next one.